What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. With today's showcase looking at another Fusion Rifle build, with the sole purpose of having Solo this time round, and to bring you some fantastic synergy that you can bring with you in whatever content you decide to bring it in. Like last time, we used the Telesta with some Elemental Well mods and Charged with Light mods to create a very synergized loadout that will provide you with constant energy and special ammo as you go, and the results from it were quite great to be honest. This time round though, we are basically going to be doing the same thing again, but we will be using the Jolton instead of the Telesto, and the Armor um, Exotic or choosing will be Dawn Chorus Helmet for some extra burn damage as we go. The end results for the build will be the same as last time, you will gain a constant boost in energy ability 24-7 as long as you get kills with weapons as subclass, and you will gain a near infinite ammo for Jolton, making it fantastic against pretty much everyone. Your super is pretty much damaging and stronger than ever before. And lastly, flexibility is available from the start and you don't need to have everything shown just to get the same results. In a nutshell, you will be heavily relying on your fusion and abilities to get the most out of the build and all of this will pay off in the end once you do activate your super, as your super with the exotic helm will make damaging bosses or champions less tiresome and less wasteful. It's quite a refreshing build to play if you want to main fusions more often, but also want to keep up for endgame content and stand your own. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So the subclass I've chosen is the Attunement of Flame for both its super damage and its melee ability that can cause some serious damage over time. This subclass has been long abandoned by many players because of its lack of synergy within the game and it's not surprising to see why. Compared to top tree that offers faster mobility in the air, and middle tree that offers support from all angles, bottom tree offers nothing unique that will pull players in, even though its focus is around damage, it's not offering a lot in terms of damage from there. Now that Dawn Chorus has arrived, we can now actually make the subclass a bit more viable in PvE and in endgame. The exotic doesn't make the subclass uniquely OP but instead allows a bridge of synergy between subclass, abilities and exotic to be more accessible all round. How it goes about this is through the burn damage the subclass offers. With Dawn Chorus, its exotic ability allows all burn damage done to last longer and deal more damage while at the same time you gain a small amount of melee energy each time with your targets burn. Now with the subclass super, grenade and melee, we can make full use of this to always have your melee back since more frequent prop burn damage, and igniting touch allows you to burn a target and cause them to explode, and this will be handy in the long run as you're going to be pretty much relying on your melee to not only proc the burn, but also get back energy for all your abilities at once via other mods. Successfully, we can also use our grenades and super to also gain melee energy back for more burn and pretty much cause a wide chain reaction wherever we go. This alongside some elemental well mods or charge with light mods will easily allow you to carry you through to endgame as the damage is top tier and can allow you to stand your own without the use of friendlies involved. We have now completed the first step to making a very powerful build in the making. As for weapons, your main weapon will be the Jolton to create plenty of elemental wells for the build and also use it to quickly weaken tougher enemies and then use our melee to finish. Like I mentioned, it's very similar to the last build we did but instead of the exotic working with our subclass directly, we have to use a medium to achieve some sort of synergy between the two. With my primary, I decided to go with something that not a lot of people would go for, and it's honestly surprising that I don't hear more players from Endgame actually using the perk for its benefits, and that is the Osmosis perk. Osmosis allows players to change their primary weapon type to the following element they are using as their subclass via grenades. And this ability works out really well for when you're using either a exotic that relies on elemental kills for a buff, or if you plan to use something like elemental wells to gain a further buff in stats. With this perk, I found that this combined with the elemental well mod, elemental armaments, can yield you some great benefits if you rely on it heavily and use your grenades quite often. Now, having all three of your slots filled out with solar pretty much allows you to have a constant source of elemental wells at your disposal which means our ability regen for our whole class is going to be constantly filled as long as we get the necessary kills. This also means that our stats for our abilities don't need to be too high and this is going to be covered already, so more customization on your end is going to be allowed further on. If you have a weapon with the Osmosis Park, I would recommend you use something long range for safety reasonings and just in case you do actually run out of special ammo for your Jolton, 
like using the Guiding Sight Scout from Iron Banner. For our secondary, I'm using the Jolton Fusion Rifle and as part of the build, we're going to build into the exotics for its benefits that will slowly work its way into our abilities, which should then grant us some extra benefits on the side. Like last time, with the use of Heavy Handed Mod, we can utilize this secondary perk to reward us extra ammo when getting surrounded by enemies, and this will allow us to have a near infinite amount of ammo freely available to use for our disposal. Unlike last time though, since the Jordan has more range than any other fusion in game and can track from long distance, I've decided to add in the special finisher mod for backup as you can inflict self damage with the weapon, which can be very disastrous depending on the scenario you're in. But also, since I'll be in close range most of the time, I'm going to be relying on my melee to get the most out of it since it's always going to be regenerating itself upon burn damage inflicted. With Jolton, we will also activate the Element Armors mod to increase our chances of getting worlds drop, and the rest from there is history. Because of how strong the fusion is and how its effects can spread just like Telesto, it fits quite well with the build in terms of inflicting the most burn damage on a group of enemies at once, which will yield you benefits. Sadly, its burn effect does not work alongside the Dawn Chorus, as many people would have hoped for. So we can't get even faster melee regen by utilizing the fusion as designed. But considering how well it works alongside the build as its own thing and how destructive it can be, I see no reason not to pair the weapon up with the build as a whole. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Kojuela Rocket Launcher with Phil Prep and Last Impressions, and this will be the heavy hitter when up against bosses or champions, and want to quickly phase through them with everything I got. As our super will be the main hit of the build, having something like this in the background will be handy for when you're not ready to use your super, and you just need something that can send a lasting impact on your target. If you plan to use this build in the endgame, having this rocket launcher with perks will come in handy for facing against all types of champions, simply for its damage alone. For the stats, we aren't going to need to fully invest or heavily invest in specific areas thanks to the ability bonuses we will gain from the elemental world mods. What this does mean though is that it leaves you room to build into whatever stat you feel is best to, well, simply invest in for your own sake. There is only two stats that we focus on the most in the build, which will be discipline and intellect, which will float around the 50 to 70 ranges. Thanks to the mods and exotics in play, we will not need to worry about heavily investing in one or two stats just to get the most out of them, which leaves us plenty of breathing room to customize how you like. In activity, you're mainly going to be using your melee the most because of the extra benefits you're getting from the mods, such as momentum transfer, invigoration, and heavy handed, and these here will feed back into melee over time and allow a constant uptime for however long you'd like to be using your melee in general. This is why my strength stat is so low, as I figured with the mods attached, they will yield enough energy for me to keep my stat float on a constant basis without the need of heavily invested armor or even the strength mods. So since the three key areas in general for the build are looked into, you're probably going to want to invest in something at least with whatever points you have left over, and the best one for that would be the intellect area. I have mine at 70, but the idea I had in mind is that since Dawn Chorus will be improving the burn damage for all sources in our arsenal, and our super can slightly refill its bar upon kills thanks to the everlasting fire, some cheap perk, I thought it would make the most sense to further boost our super usage as much as we can so we can make full use of the exotic in its power. Now I haven't done a lot for this area except from boosting the singular stat and adding on the frontal wisdom mod, since everything we do in game will yield us super in some shape or form. Now if you want to speed up the process, you can add on the dynamo mod or the hands on mod to build your super up much more faster. But this will all depend on how much you plan to use your super and pretty much in what content. Now onto the mods and these are what I chose to aim for for the best chances of making the build feel comfortable to the user and what generally offers the most benefits to user overall. For head we have resilience, fusion rifle ammo finder, an elemental ornaments mod. Arm we have recovery, momentum transfer, fastball, an element armaments mod. Chest we have minor discipline, Cursive Damner Times 2 and Quake Charge mod. Leg, we have Maya Discipline, Invigoration and Heavy Handed mod. Bond, we have Special Finisher, Distribution and Frontal Wisdom mod. Jolton is considered a unique weapon in the world of Destiny, as it's a fusion rifle by heart, but it works completely different than the standard ones that many of us are used to. 
The fact that it shoots out a large projectile that upon impact can burn targets for a short time and has great range and tracking, something that most fusion rifles heavily need, pretty much shows how exotic the weapon is while still sticking to its roots. Like Telesto, it has its place in many activities and can be a powerhouse when built around it. From seeing all sorts of builds that utilise the Jolton to its max, this is the one build that you'll want to try and see how well it flows from start to finish. Basically, the build I have has two forms to it. Firstly, we have the option of constantly boosting our ability regen via melee, super and grenades, and all of this will yield us burn damage for bigger damage over long periods. Secondly, we have the option of relying on the use of Jolton and this near infinite ammo, and the chance to constantly proc the element of armor's mod for more ability cooldowns and constantly create a loop of more ammo when needed and more abilities when needed. Both of these in hand will allow you to easily regen whatever resources you need on the fly, while also putting up a sheer amount of force when being faced against it, and it's great if you want to utilize bottom tree in some way or form. The idea I had in mind was to utilize Jolton with Dawn Core's exotic trait to increase its effects on a large scale, and with the help of the wild mods, basically create a miniature Nezorak Sin that will constantly feed us ability energy as we go. Sadly, with how Dawn Chorus is coded, it doesn't offer the unique effects that Nezorak and Telesto offers. However, this doesn't mean it all goes to waste though, as it still has an overall effect on how the build plays. Like I mentioned earlier, the build can be split into technically two, if you wish, but when combined, it can offer a near carbon copy of the latter Void build that we've done quite a while ago. When you think about it, you're getting a lot of benefits from using fusions and unlimited burn damage that the Void variant doesn't offer. Plus, in endgame content such as Nightfall Ordeals or Gambit, this is where the build will shine the most when you have a field of enemies that can easily spread its effects far and wide. The build overall can be described as destructive, hard hitting, but insanely fun for a fun twist on using fusion as a whole. The build will give you everything that you need to be a force to be reckoned with and will reward you plenty for for doing so. As the new season is just around the corner, you'll probably want something that can help with taking on whatever new enemy or boss will face. This build should cover that for you, and if not, well then you can freely customize your liking with this 2 in 1 setup. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and see you on the next one.